Hello, this is Stan the History Man again. I'd like to talk to you today about something, a vanished technology. We have a few of them, like the steam railroad and so on, but the one that's really vanished, you won't even find it in a museum anywhere, is the dirigible. And I did some research and I found an incredible fact. After World War I, every single dirigible that was not made by the Germans, except for one, crashed. And that's an incredibly bad luck record. But for example, the United States had the Akron, the Macon, the Shenandoah, they all, all those three crashed because they were built in the United States. We had the Los Angeles, which was built in Germany, and that did not crash. The British had two dirigibles, the R-100 and the R-101. The R-100 took a transatlantic flight in 1930, which was quite an achievement in those days. And it uh, ran into some storms and so on, basically no real problem. Then it took a tour of southern Ontario and went back to England. The R-101 staggered on its first uh, regular flight, aside from testing flights, barely made it over to France and crashed with heavy loss of life, by far the worst aviation disaster for uh, to Lenin for years afterwards. And then the British said, okay, that's it. They, they crushed the R-100 and sold it for scraps. So the R-100 is the only non-German built dirigible uh, that did not crash. And that's an incredible tale. The problem with dirigibles, and very few people talk about this, is they fly low. And that's where all the storms are and the, and the, and the bad weather. Most of them were broken up by bad weather. And that is why we all know about the Hindenburg, of course, blowing up and so on, but that's unusual. Most of them were victims of bad weather, and that's basically the reason why no more dirigibles were built.